What's going on guys, Hayden back. Today I will be covering my top six ETFs to buy ASAP during this crazy market crash that have the most potential for growth and passive income in the future. Now ETFs are a great way to diversify your portfolio and some have even wildly outperformed the S&P 500. This is because an ETF or an exchange traded fund is a type of pooled investment security that operates very similar to a mutual fund or an index fund. However, something to remember is ETFs tend to be more cost effective and more liquid as they trade on exchanges like shares of a stock and mutual funds, however, can provide some benefits such as active management and greater regulatory oversight, but only allow transactions once per day and tend to have higher costs and expense ratios. So obviously there is a trade-off between ETFs and mutual funds, depending on how hands-on you want to be. Now ETFs allow you to invest in a particular index, sector, commodity, or other asset class. And this gives you the power to invest in hundreds hundreds of stocks, typically at a low expense ratio, unlike the competitor mutual funds. Now, when I buy funds in the stock market, my strategy is to buy and hold forever. Now, although there are certain occasions when I do rebalance my portfolio and end up eventually selling the outliers that underperform compared to the other ones, these six ETFs seem to be the most promising worthwhile investments. Now, without wasting any more time, definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. And let's dive into today's episode. Now, in no particular order, my first pick for an ETF would be QQQ also known as Invesco Trust Series 1, which I recently purchased just a few days ago. Now, the reason this is in my top six is because if you've watched the news, media publishers like Yahoo Finance, CNBC, even Business Insider are posting headlines that scream recession. Now, the media plays a big role in driving the stock market as well as the feds. And if fear is pumped, a sell-off is usually followed like we're seeing today. Now, already this year, the S&P 500 total market index has dropped 23 3.4% compared to a 15.5% fall in the typical stock market index. And what's crazier is the fear and greed index is also set at extreme fear. And the current market sentiment at the time of recording this also shows 30% of investors are in stocks and now 70% is in cash in their portfolio. And to top all this off, the feds are even incentivizing savings by increasing rate hikes, which is super important. Now you'll start to see people sell off their positions in the market and begin holding cash out of fear as banks also increase savings rate to offset the rising inflation, the interest on loans, and even the interest on credit card rates. Now, since QQQ tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, the share price goes up and down along with the tech heavy, remember, tech heavy NASDAQ 100. Now, as I mentioned before, since the feds are increasing rates, you'll see the opposite happen to the price of tech stocks. And this is because tech stocks tend to be more vulnerable towards swings in interest rates because they have high high price to earning ratios and typically pay little in the way of dividends. Now the growing market weight of big tech in indexes like the S&P 500 have tied the fate of the markets to these rate sensitive giants. Companies like Apple and Google, Microsoft, and even Tesla generated over 25% of the total stock market return alone just last year. And you guessed it, the top 10 holdings that make up 50% of QQQ are Apple, Tesla, Google, Microsoft, and a few other major tech heavy companies. Warren Buffett once said that it is wise for investors to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. He also once said to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is obviously how Buffett and YouTube can track my performance and recommend this video for others to see. But back to this quote, in simple terms, it means when others FOMO, they typically overpay for their positions and the market is usually set to correct shortly after. And on the other hand, when others are fearful, it may present a good value buying opportunity. Now, taking a look at QQQ, this ETF has managed to earn lucky investors an average of 19.46% a year over the past 10 years and 9% since inception in 1999. That's 23 years from today. Now, remember, these percentages are obviously based off the market at the time I'm recording this specific video. So they are subject to change as time goes on. This means had you invested $10,000 back in 2012 and just left it alone, it would now be worth close to $59,000 today, almost a 500% return on your investment, which is pretty good considering the stock market you usually returns about 10% a year. Now, since I missed out on its sale back during the pandemic in 2020, the previous correction in the market, it is finally back on sale today, down 26% this year. And as we know, most blue chip stocks aren't really going anywhere. And with some analysts even believing that inflation may have peaked, 
we might see a speedy recovery for QQQ over the next few years. Now, obviously, previous performance isn't the only thing to look at when investing in ETFs, and QQQ's expense ratio is also quite low at only 0.2% compared to its asset class median, which is much higher at about 0.57%. And lastly, they even have a turnover rate, which fluctuates between 7 and 9%, which is also extremely low compared to its asset class, which is typically 30%. Now, remember, investing in high turnover assets outside of a retirement fund means that you'll be paying a lot more in short-term capital gain taxes every single year. Now, my second ETF pick is called SPY. Some of you actually may have heard of this, and this is the bread and butter in the ETF world, and is currently down 16% this year, which is a good discount. Now, SPY has also returned in average of 13.5% a year over the past 10 years, which is incredible. And SPY not only has the highest volume compared to all ETFs, it is also one of the oldest and most popular ETFs in the world, and for good reason. Now, SPY tracks the S&P 500 index, which includes 500 of the largest companies in the country. And although SPY holds a similar composition to QQQ, like Amazon and Google and Apple and Microsoft, they are vastly different in the world of ETFs. For example, SPY tracks around 500 stocks total, while QQQ only tracks 100. And SPY's expense ratio is only, and this is extremely low, 0.09%, while QQQ is 0.2% in the realm of ETFs. Now, having an extremely low expense ratio is great, but it shouldn't be the only thing to consider. There are actually plenty of other S&P 500 ETFs that charge even less than SPY. For instance, State State offers SPDR portfolio S&P 500 uh, with the ticker SPLG, and this tracks the S&P 500 just like SPY does, and actually only charges 0.03%, two thirds smaller than SPY, and is the reason why it's my number three pick in my top six. Now, the thing you need to consider, though, is it is less liquid and not as popular as SPY, which is important when it comes to how quickly you actually want to sell out of your fund. But since I don't plan on selling my positions in a very long time, because that's the title of today's video, to buy and hold forever, I'm really not too worried. And also, if you only have a few thousand dollars or even a hundred thousand dollars in it, and you actually try to sell it, you would still be totally fine, as there is still plenty of liquidity in it, and I'd only see it really being a problem with like hundreds if not millions of dollars in it, then you might have some liquidity issues. But otherwise, there is still plenty of liquidity for the typical investor. Now, SPY's top 10 holdings also only make up 28%, while QQQ's is 52%. And this makes SPY a much more diverse all-around ETF. And there are also some people that only invest in SPY in their portfolio because of how diverse it is. And this is because it spreads your investment dollars across all 11 sectors in ETFs. Now, in just a single trade, you would own tech stocks, consumer stocks, utilities, and pretty much all the rest. And SPY stock even gives a greater weight to sectors containing the most valuable stocks. And lastly, another reason why I like SPY is that it pays dividends. It basically collects all the dividends that are paying in the S&P 500 and then pays them to you. And currently the dividend yield on SPY is roughly 1.4, which is low for, let's say, a dividend heavy uh, ETF. But I'll show you one specifically meant for dividends in a minute. Now take, for example, if you invest $25,000 dollars into spy stock you'll actually receive 350 dollars a year paid quarterly on your investment which honestly isn't a bad kickback my fourth pick is Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, and this is a great ETF to diversify your portfolio into companies that pay high dividends. Now, this Schwab fund has an average dividend yield of 3.11%, which is about average, and that means for every $10,000 invested, you'll earn about $311 every year in dividends. Now, this ETF fund tracks the total return of the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index, and this index is designed to obviously measure the stock's performance of high dividend yielding companies within the US. This fund also has a great record of consistently paying dividends and also has returned investors around 13.88% a year over the past 10 years consecutively. So not only do you get great performance, you also get high dividend payouts. And one thing to consider before investing in this ETF, however, is it does have a fairly high turnover rate at 46%. Now, this does seem to be typical for dividend funds because the market is always like changing and businesses are always increasing their dividends and decreasing their dividend yields. And the fund will obviously adjust accordingly. 
to capture the top dividend paying companies. Now, this means you'll be paying more short term capital gains each year than others I have previously mentioned. Now, consider this tip a smart way to avoid actually paying these taxes is to own it within a retirement account, like a traditional or Roth IRA. Now, sales of purchases on stocks or bonds, funds, even ETFs, or any other securities that are made within an individual retirement account are not taxable at all. And this rule applies to all investment transactions, regardless of whether you have accrued capital gains, dividend payouts, or even interest income. Now, my fifth ETF is in the healthcare industry, and the fund is called the Healthcare Select Sector SPDR with the ticker XLV. Now, the reason I like this fund so much is because it checks all the boxes when it comes to investing long-term, as well as being a defensive ETF, a key term here to know. Now, a defensive ETF is usually not affected by economic tightening imposed by the feds, which we're seeing today. And they are usually in recession-proof industries, and they tend to stay stable when the markets are healthy or when they're down. It doesn't really matter. Sectors like utilities and consumer staples and healthcare are some of the biggest defensive sectors uh, that are in ETFs. And at the end of the day, if inflation and gas go through the roof, like we're seeing currently with gas with regular being like $5 a gallon, which is nuts, I'll still end up needing to pay for the gas. I'll still end up needing to pay for toilet paper and I'll still end up needing to pay for food and doctors. So that's why it's good to have a defensive ETF in your portfolio. Now consider this healthcare ETF is only down 7% compared to tech and the S&P 500, which is down close to like 15 to 25% depending on the ETF. So you can see how that vastly difference. And I'd probably rather be down only 7% than 30% in my portfolio or 25% in my portfolio. And this is why you typically see growth stocks often generating headlines and excitement. Uh, They basically pose a considerable risk as to how big they swing up. They can also swing back down, uh, which we're currently witnessing so far in 2022. Now, many of the popular stocks that were in ETFs and mutual funds that originally skyrocketed in mid-2020 and well into 2021 have now come crashing down this year, as you can see, pulling the growth-heavy NASDAQ composite into basically correction territory. And we'll see if that actually happens. And this is also why defensive stocks offer much more stability during volatile market environments. And specifically, this healthcare ETF also has a low expense ratio at a measly 0.1%, a low turnover rate at 4%, and a great performance of 15.55%, which is incredible, 15.5% every single year. Finally, my last choice is consumer discretionary select sector, uh, which is an ETF, and the ticker is XLY. Now, consumer discretionary is used for classifying goods and services that are considered non-essentials, but desirable if the available income that you're getting paid is sufficient to purchase them. Basically, when the economy is booming and doing well and you have some extra free cash and you go buy a Starbucks, that's what a consumer discretionary actually means. Now, obviously, an ETF like this doesn't do as well when the economy is hurting like today, but I'd like to believe that the U.S. has had more good years than it has had bad, and we've always pushed through these hard times, which is why I'm counting on Starbucks and McDonald's and these major corporations to do well in the years to come. And that means at some point our market is destined to recover and we will see companies, like I said, McDonald's and Starbucks, Target, even Home Depot make a comeback in the near future. Unfortunately, the companies that I just listed make up some of the top 10 companies in this ETF, which is about 70% of the holdings. What's even more promising is this ETF has returned investors over 16.6% a year over the past 10 years and has an expense ratio of only 0.1% and a turnover of 11, which makes this an all around good ETF. Oh, and not to mention it's down 28% this year. 28%, practically 30% this year, which is a huge discount from buying it a couple months ago. Otherwise, guys, that pretty much wraps up today's video. And if you do have any of these funds in your portfolio, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you think I made a mistake or missed one, definitely make sure to drop a comment and let me know because I'd love to hear. But otherwise, with that being said, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe, and I'll see you in a later video. Peace.